Either that or I'm suffering some latent case of pneumonia. Perhaps, but you look fine. Oh, we're on. Hi, Mark. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that, but you were saying your cough is almost gone. So right. you were Sorry. under the I was the on weather. the phone with my agent. You really? Were? No. Tell him go to hell. Anyway. <laughs> I don't get up for that kind of money. <laughs> the Spielberg. Was. Like, I would deal with that hack. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's episode number 217. This is The Secret Show. I'm Patricia Steer, and it's weirdly enough yellow day, and we don't know what that means, but I'm wearing yellow, and Mark's wearing yellow, and we didn't plan that. No, we never. Well, no, we never call each other and say, what are you wearing? <laughs> that would be so weird. In the future, we may have to, but as of now, we, we don't. We did once which was at the uh, Flat Earth Conference. And uh, it was in Raleigh, North Carolina in November. And you asked me what I was wearing for the Flatty Awards. Oh, right. That's yeah, only I, because I, you were planning on wearing some crazy glasses. Didn't tell me till I saw you. And uh, you kind of wanted to know the theme. So Not just crazy glasses, really cool neon framed glasses uh, that I bought from Amazon. But you gave them away, didn't you, at the I conference? Did. I did. I gave the glasses away to Candy, mm -hmm. and I gave the bow tie away to Caroline from the documentary team. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. we're going to talk about the documentary. We're going to talk about a basketball player who believes that dinosaurs coexisted with giants, and they were the giants' pets, and right. um, all sorts of craziness. I do want to say... Um, to uh, a cat, a cat who's listening to, a big fan of the show is a cat, a black cat, named uh, Nephilim, Neff, and it's uh, D-I-T-R-H's cat, and um, and Paige, his girlfriend, and Neffy had to go to the vet today and have seven teeth pulled. So um, there was- Really? Yeah, which is sad, because, you know, it probably meant that the cat was in pain for quite a while, but cats don't walk around going, ow, ow, they just act normal, and um, anyway, so now Neff is- Resting comfortably. Right. right. <laughs> um, mm, I don't have any other cat news. So we've got a bunch of different things to talk about. I want to say hello to the live chat and encourage everyone to give the video a thumbs up even before you watch it. And if right. you're watching this at a later time, not with the live chat going, please leave a comment when the show is through. I do appreciate you being here. Um, you want to start with whatever you've got on your mind? Uh, yeah, let's work our way backwards. Uh, obvious announcements, the November conference coming up, the United States conferences in Denver coming up. Uh, it's the FEIC 2018. Bob and Cammy will be able to just basically walk there. Yeah, I know. Have to stay in the hotel. <laughs> and, and if I was still in Colorado, I would have done the same thing. It would have been, it would have been really great, but eh, no worries. Uh, the Canadian conference mm. in Edmonton, Canada coming up in August. We do not have our official things yet for that because it's I, on the website. Yeah. The day, the days are there, but I, I don't know what we're waiting for. Are we waiting for, are you and I waiting for anything? We got the hotel, mm -hmm. but that was we about got it. The hotel. We just didn't buy plane tickets yet. We haven't gotten plane tickets yet. <laughs> Too far and, away. The other thing, which is going to be in Canada. Oh, by the way, when people hear us say we, you, I, people are maybe assuming, oh, they're in the same house. Oh, they're a secret couple. I mean, we plan on stuff together a lot because we're a yeah. team. But yeah, that's well, we get, flying we get on the same plane. <laughs> you know, we get invited to the same things. We know the same people. You know. Yeah, we're hated it's, by the same people. Exactly. <laughs> You know, yeah. So when when I say you know have your people call my people, I don't have to do that to Patricia because it's the same people. Exactly, exactly. So um, the other thing, of course, which is coming up very very soon, is the film festival in yes. Toronto, Canada. The Hot Docs, which is now starting to break into the press. Yeah, in the description box of this video, I put a couple of the many articles that have come out that are talking about the event, which is yet to come, but they're, right. you know, teasing with it. So those are in the description box of this video if you want to read about it. Um, and uh, Daniel J. Clark, you might have met him if you watched a couple of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potato shows because he's been on camera with us. Right. Um, it's called Behind the Curve. Behind the Curve. And we didn't know that was the title when they filmed it. Nope. And, uh, well, they didn't have it. They didn't have a title yet. Um, Bob from Globusters is in it. Jaron Campanella is in it. I don't know if Cammy and Missa are in it. I'm going to assume yes. Don't know. I would think um, so. A bunch of other people are in it as well. Right. And uh, we didn't know exactly the title. We both suggested titles, but they were like, nope. <laughs> so, 
That's not our film. I yeah. mean, we we yeah. are in it. But we're in it, but we're just, we're in it, and it's a it's about flat Earth. It's about um, the I don't know what you'd say how you'd explain it. The newly revised flat Earth uh, concept that is growing and how there right. are real people involved in it, not right. just a bunch of weirdos like the general public might think. And it follows around several of us real people and uh, shows our life and what we do and what we think about. And it culminates at the conference that happened in November in Raleigh right. and filmed the conference. Many people who were there will be in the documentary. So. It's going to be a lot like, and, if anyone, and I know this, this dates Invasion me Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yeah, it, actually, I was thinking Friday the 13th. Yeah, but yeah. it's sort of a horror or the blob. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's going to be a lot like the documentary that came out some years ago now uh, called Trekkies, which was about the lives of Star Trek fans. You know, the, you know, because not necessarily tongue in cheek, but because the the film the film crew has to remain neutral. So I know there's some people out there that are a little nervous that this might be damaging to flat Earth, but that's not what this is about. This is about the lives of flat earthers. Let you decide because they don't want. Okay, they're they're smart enough. If you're a filmmaker, think of it this way: you don't. They're going to do what ABC did, which is they're going to just paint the picture for you, and then say, "Okay, here's flat earthers. We're not for them or against them. We're just showing you what it's about." Because if if the film crew comes out as for, they'll get smacked by the general public. If they come out against, they'll they'll get the ire of the flat earth community, which and is also massive. it'll just be a, what, what would they make an entire mean documentary? Exactly. I mean, no, you want you want to keep it positive energy and you want to make it interesting. That's the whole thing. You want to keep people engaged when they're watching this going. Wow. Even if it, even if they're treating it like a car wreck, you know, where you're driving by going, wow, look at the mess that thing that car's in. <laughs> even if they do that, it's still better than trying to say these guys are idiots. And that's what ABC did with, and which is why, by the way, I firmly believe that that uh, ABC's when you type in flat Earth, their little mini thing was is at the top of the search at with all times. your face. Um, yeah, it's yeah. not because I'm on the thumbnail. I can guarantee you that. And and it doesn't matter who else is. In fact, uh, what was the thing that just came out today? Uh, an hour before the show, Joe Rogan made another piece. Oh, we got and, to talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, hang on, if I type in flat Well, Earth. anyway, the Hot Docs uh, 2018 has got 246 documentary films and 16 interdisciplinary projects. I don't know what that means. Right. Um, and it's 50% uh, of it are female filmmakers. And so it's, you know, it's a, a big sampling of different filmmakers from all around the place, America, and everywhere. Yeah, this is going to be a big year for, as you know, because of the whole Me Too thing and the Academy Awards, they're pushing female filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be extra attention paid on this this particular film festival. And even though Daniel J. Clark, who's actually got his name tied to it, I'm finally glad to see that, is uh, he's even he's even though he's tied to the project, there are a number of women in it. So, you know including you, you're going to be probably the most high profile woman involved with this. We don't know. I mean, I think there's probably lots of documentaries that have women in them. I'm just, no, no, no. But I mean, in, as far as our projects concerned, Oh, in flat earth. Oh, I yeah, see in flat earth. Oh, so okay. it's, I'm, it's I'm Miss and Cammy might be in this. I just don't know. Cause we only know what we were in and we don't yeah. know what gets left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, there could be two have... seconds of me. Hopefully it's good. Two seconds. I, you know, I think they spent a lot of time with, with you and I, and so I don't think you're going to be on the cutting room floor. I wonder if they'll leave those nude scenes with you in <laughs> kind of hope so no. um <laughs> anyway hot talks has been going on for 25 years so it's definitely a well-established uh, film festival and that's pretty much it um let, when, let's, well, go, you go ahead. Well, I was saying, let's be transparent about this the reason why this documentary is at this film festival is they are trying to sell it do we get a dime out of this no, no, we don't. <laughs> we signed away our dime almost immediately. We didn't when, do it for that. We did yeah. it because it was an interesting project, and we said, "Sure, count us in." Oh hell, I would have. I would have paid money up front to. Make yeah, I would have paid to be in it. <laughs> to, to, to be in it. I mean, it was it was worth it, and it's it's really a great high profile vehicle for the community. 
mm -hmm. at large. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, sure. cross my fingers, Flat that we represent Flat Earthers are in a very, very high profile film festival. I mean, yeah. way to go, Flat Earthers. And this is just the beginning. I'm sure it's going to get more and more and more with more of us in it. Because and it's, this isn't the only one that it's going to be pushed at. They're going to yeah. they're going to take this thing. Now, that being said. Well, we'll if, see how it goes, right? Yeah. If there's a distributor <laughs> that picks it up right away, well, then we'll see if it goes to another film festival. Or if during the whole thing, there just are loads of people standing up and throwing rotted tomatoes at the and screen. <laughs> not to toot the community's horn, but I looked at some of the other lists that, you know, the other films that were going to be in mm -hmm. this film festival. It's like, look, let's, let's be honest here. Flat Earth has got to be the most interesting film that's going to be there by well, far. We think that because we're Flat Earthers. It is, though. It no, is. I, mean, it I think you're biased. The, oh, come on. It's yeah, okay. So, that, what if you were a chef? It, it what if you were a chef? There's really? a Canadian documentary being shown there called The Heat, A Kitchen Revolution. Yep, yep, yep. yep and so yep. if you were a chef, you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's awesome. Stupid flat earth film did, in there too, but, did, you know. Did, okay, all right, all right. Let, let's put this in perspective, shall we? Mm -hmm. Flat earth, even before it became a documentary, was so powerful that it changed the YouTube search algorithm. algorithm. Wow. All right, flat earth. Cool. The, 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 whole, right. the whole criteria. Wow, I couldn't say algorithm, <laughs> but it, but it's true. I mean, when you when you type into Google, you type in Earth is or the Earth is, it always comes up flat. You say is the is the Earth flat? And that guy that worked for Google when he came out uh, and he said, look, he goes, people are watching a lot of flat Earth videos. He goes, you know, and he even quoted. He goes, if somebody watches twenty, that must have been the average. If somebody watches twenty flat Earth videos in a row, what do you think? What do you think it's going to recommend? It's going to recommend Flat Earth. Yeah, exactly. We did this without the documentary. This documentary, this is the next level for us. I, I guarantee it. Some of the other documentaries, I'm looking at the list. Um, and like I said, in the description box of this video, you can look at these articles that I posted. There's many. I just put a few just in case anyone wanted to look. Right. One is called The Trolley. And it's a documentary examining the history of public transit trolleys by visiting 34 countries around the world. So I think Flat Earth kicks that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, you were talking about tra public transportation for a second. Okay, there. I, it was, I, it's I, probably I cool. All. Okay, come it's on, probably come beautiful. On. It, come on, Flat Earth is be, way better. <laughs> Flat Earth is going to be the dark horse. People are going to, there's going to be a buzz about this because here's the thing. When you're a distributor, first thing you're going to do is you're going to have your interns start going into the internet, right? And and firing off. It's like, okay, find out, find out what we can about this Flat Earth thing, right? Mm -hmm. And if the interns don't know already, they'll be like, They'll be looking at their laptops going, holy smokes. You know, there'll be people elbowing each other going, okay, there's something here. And why why are we just hearing about this now? I guarantee you, this is the, the reason why this is important to the community. If you guys want to know the, the lowdown here is because if it comes out, if it is widely distributed, it, be, it now gives license to mainstream media to come after it. Meaning now mainstream media can talk about it without feeling dumb. They don't have to go to Flat Earthers directly. They can say, well, these people made a documentary about it. We can address the documentary. We can we can carve it up six ways from Sunday. Oh, no. <laughs> well, or, or not. It really yeah. depends because your average, you and I were talking, the average entertainment reviewer, not exactly heavy science based. They're looking at it from an entertainment standpoint. I mean, which is, it's Flat Earth is entertaining, even if it is a horrible, horrible travesty that this lie's been pulled over, uh, right. like the wool been pulled over the eyes of all of us in humanity for many, many years, our grandparents and great grandparents. The aspect of the whole YouTube thing and the videos and the people, the personalities is, yeah, it's entertaining. We are transfixed by it. We're very, very involved. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. So but I'm... I don't know. There's this other one that's showing at the uh, at the hot docs. It's called "My Father Is My Mother's Brother." It's a touching family narrative about a Bohemian singer artist who becomes a father to his young niece when his sister's mental health deteriorates. I don't know. I don't know which one I'm going to see. Yeah, you know, when as as or you were about halfway father. through that sentence, if you saw my eyes glaze <laughs> you over, fell asleep, and your head I, I your just desk. Saw... <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I'm sure there's really good ones there. And I'm sure these that I'm joking about are really awesome. And Document it, and I mean, yes, everyone's well. I love well, documentaries, you know? So do yeah. I. But it's rare that you get a documentary that can cross over into the mainstream and it grabs people's attention. And as you know, Flat Earth is so polarizing. It, I just can't see how it can lose because people have an opinion on it. Whether you love it or you hate it, Flat Earth cannot be ignored. And that's what producers are looking for.
and you know that's what i'm cross my fingers my of course as much as i'm going to enjoy going to this thing you know me i'm going to be cringing the entire time well we're going to go and we're both going and we're going to sit next to each other and prior to it we're going to do a sort of a pre-documentary video together and then we're going to do a sort of post after and see if carolyn and daniel are free uh to talk with us about how they think it went and um there might be some drinking before we sit down in our chairs oh, to maybe. watch the documentary because I, not that I rely upon drinking to alleviate my nerves much, <laughs> but we'll be drinking. Yeah. Uh, again, we'll bring flasks. I, we'll be, no, we won't. <laughs> I'm excited. But at the same time though, I, you know, you just, you, you never know. Well, I'm, you know, when you, you film anybody, any person, even if you use your phone and you film a family reunion, there's going to be some moments using your cell phone even that you're like oh, that particular shot's not that great i'm so. the, the one thing i am not worried about though is having it turn into a negative piece against no, no, I, I, I i'm sorry i was there during 80 percent of the shooting and you know. carolyn and daniel are very 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 nice people right and unless they are the biggest damn liars the world's oh my god and <laughs> worse than the powers that should not be then i think it's very neutral um, and they've neutral peas and they've treated us flat earthers gently. Yeah. And, and remember that there'd be no reason to bring us up there. You know, we're paying for, to go up there ourselves, but there's no, um, there'd be no reason for us to go to the film festival. They wouldn't even ask us if they were going to, you know, just maybe they up. might, cause it would add more spice to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. They don't no, need to no, throw no. the They've tomatoes been... just at the screen. They can actually hit us in person. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, they and I, the the team and I, have been exchanging little emails because they're looking for whatever angle they can to pitch it to producers. And and so I sent them. I don't know if you remember that thing I did last year where I typed flat Earth and then converted it to another language, and then used that language and typed that into YouTube, and then I made a compilation of you know. French and Spanish and German and Russian and uh, take your pick, Canadian because you know they have their own language. Pig Latin, and, you know. Yeah, pig, pig Latin, uh, some dead language that hasn't been spoken for a thousand years. Latin. Stuff like that. <laughs> I think it was Anunnaki. The um, all those things help because that way they can sit. You you pitch it to them. It's like, look, there's an international market out there. It's all about you know for producers. It's like, okay, who can we? Pit, you know, who can we market this to? It's like, you can market this to anybody. But, you know? you know, some people might be watching this and saying to themselves, self, why would Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer or anybody at all want Flat Earth to be out in the mainstream public in a documentary or picked up to do some kind of a mini series or whatever? Right. Why? And I, the, uh, my number one answer is, more eyes see flat earth, more people, not all of them, will be able to learn about it and then do research and then yeah. start, you know, growing more flat earthers so we can change the way the world works. I know that's a, a big ask, but we can never do it without more people, more the, hands on deck. We are a media based world. Let's let's call it what it is. You know, social media has now taken over everything. Social media is drowning out television. They're drow drowning out movie theaters whatever avenue it takes to get into the homes of people that have not been exposed to flat earth, I'm all for it. Right. If, if I have to Indeed. go freaking door to door. <laughs> Hello, yeah. my name is Mark Sargent. <laughs> have you heard about flat earth? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, what, whatever it takes. If, if I have to sneak into their homes through Netflix, that's what I'm going to do. I, whatever, t whatever avenue that we have to go down, I'm, I'm a backer of. And so having the documentary was just a natural. And honestly, look, it was not the these were not the first guys that called us. This documentary should have been done 18 months ago. How many people had spoke to us before? Three. You more than three, me. Three, because or four, three or four groups. In fact, there were before I'm, I, I actually, arrived I actually on the scene, lost count of the people because there was a Netflix. And other people. It's not just us. Other people as well have been talked to. Yeah, about. I mean, true, true TV, they were the ones in 2015 they were looking at us. Yeah, 2015, yeah, even before you got on board just before you got on board and then uh and weren't you saying to yourself wow you know what we need more women in flat earth and poof that's, then I appeared. that's exactly what i thought absolutely <laughs> really and, and in fact yeah in that, the fact they were asking me for that they're going we you know can you get us more women i'm like yeah yeah I'll, I'll work on it see what i can do i had to conjure you up the uh 
Uh, then we had Robert Kiviet and the Netflix deal that that died. Uh, two Due other to in some part a certain Mister M P who made some kind of video with some other person that was just full of lies about the Robert Kiviet project. Oh no, I was thinking of Eric Dubé. Oh well, yeah, that part too. That, there was that a sort of. A... Oh yeah, no, no, Matt. Matt yeah. is never. <laughs> he's never helped us. I didn't us. name him, you did. Matt, you know, no, Matt, Matt has never helped us in any of these things yet. Uh, I won't get into it. Poor Robert Kiviet, you know. Poor Robert, yeah. And the, I mean, there's been others down the road. So when Daniel, and and because it takes time, the Daniel's team spent an entire year with us, really. Started in the, in the yeah, spring and was up in Seattle twice, took me down to the Eclipse, was down to Houston twice, once with you solo and once and with Interacting me. with tons of people. It was out in Denver with Bob. He was mm -hmm. out in Los Angeles with their group. I don't know exactly which part of their group they were. They were down there. He was doing the LA thing, and then he went. Then the whole team went down to Raleigh. So they got a ton of footage. So, so of the flat earthers who were in involved in any of those scenarios, maybe you're going to be in the documentary too. Yeah, yeah, kind of exciting. And after it's shown in the film festival. I don't know where it goes so that we can tell people, here's where you view it. When we find out, we'll let you know. We won't know until they tell us who who bought it. I'm so excited. And it's so, next month. Today is March 21st, right. 2018. So it's in April. And we don't know because the, uh, the film festival lasts- uh, Two weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. And we're slot in there somewhere. Yeah. Slotted in there somewhere, yes. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't even know. I don't That's have my. That's why we don't tickets. have tickets yet. Yeah, Link. we don't have tickets yet because I mean, all we know is we're going to get in. We don't have to buy the tickets for the festival, right, but right. we don't have our plane We've tickets because we're, yeah, we're not. Stay and yeah. buy plane tickets. So if anyone, yeah, if anyone's up there, and you know, we've got a big Canadian contingency. Yes. If anyone's up there in Toronto, uh, look it up. And if you Ginger can, Sugarbush actually, he and I've been corresponding, and he was saying it would, might be a great idea to. Um, go to uh, Niagara Falls while there. I've never been to Niagara Falls, like a day trip. Have oh, you sure. been to Niagara Falls? Uh, no, no. Do you want to go to Niagara Falls with me? Uh, Dave, yes, I will go. How could I say no? Really? I've always wanted to go, but it's just one of those things I've never done. There's so. all sorts of different things you could do there. You could go below and put on the rain gear. You could watch it from above, whatever. So anyway, as you guys, so, so it's called Behind the Curve. Look for it. There's going to be more stories as this thing progresses. I don't want to bore people by talking about this, but it's exciting that there's a documentary about flat Earth. That's you know a real full blown. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's the next step because I I know we become kind of media spoiled, especially after the conference. You know, all those interviews from from all the good and bad. You know, good and bad, but surprising. Like BuzzFeed, they did a nice job. ABC News did a nice job. Uh, HBO could have been a little kinder. As you know, well. when they put kooky music behind various right. flat earthers, it just, it's so manipulative. And right. I am quite sure that Daniel and Carolyn haven't done that in this case. In fact, no. uh, the music that's been used for the documentary uh, Behind the Curve, some of it is stuff that we all know, some artists that we know. I don't know if we're able to say who some of them are or- I, We can't because we don't We don't know who- We don't know. We know who we've suggested. Yeah, we've suggested. And look, I've gave them all the lists and they've got tons of material to choose from. Music, music- That doesn't mean they're in there, but they've been suggested. Yeah. Um, Issa Mahalski, just, you know, you send the email to Carolyn and Daniel and we don't know what they do. Uh, yeah. We don't know, but- it took him. It took him three months to edit this thing. So you know, we're. I'm. I'm expecting some good stuff. I. They got some good. They've got some good material in there. So it's gonna be so fun. I know. I know. So much flat Earth stuff going on. Okay, so we've got all right. So, coming let, let's, in so April. Let's, seg let's segue into one of the weirder things. Let's segue into the off Broadway play. That's the which, weirdest thing. Which ever. just we, We've talked about that a little bit, but go. Yeah. So there's an off-Broadway play at, with an all-star producer, director, cast. You know, one of the I think the director uh, ha already has a Tony under her belt, and it's called This Flat Earth, but it has nothing, nothing. to do at all with, with this flat, flat Earth. <laughs> with flat Earth. In fact, I jumped the gun and as soon as I heard that. I I found out. You know, I did some research and found all the producers' contact info, and I shot them thing saying, look, if you need any help from the community, you just let me know, right? And then, because they they didn't list, you know, because it was a teaser back then, I didn't know what the script was. 
now that I know what the script is, well, they're not going to be using us for, for much help. So it's called List Flat Earth, and, the, and this is where it gets a little odd, but it's about two kids who survive a local shooting at their high school. Of all By things. the way, that is so weird. I know. And that of weird? those things because happening lately or supposedly. Because this script was came up before the Parkland shooting. And so what she appears to have done is she remember how I said that that Flat Earth, when it started entering the media, it became uh, a term that was used to describe crazy people. So there's there's nuts. There's really insane. And then there's totally Flat Earth. Right. You know, flat earth has now been synonymous with really, really crazy. So she thought she'd be clever. And instead of calling the play our crazy world or our insane world, she called it this flat earth. It's somewhat insulting, actually. Kind yeah. of. But at the same time, it's like, look, it's it's metrics. And who knows if this thing's up for a Tony, you know, down the road, this thing could if it has legs, I mean, it's going to run. And if it, if it gets good reviews, we're going to see this flat earth in the vocabulary well, of the Broadway scene. Remember a while back, there was this um, writer, Thomas Friedman, who came out with a book called The World is Flat, A Brief History of the 21st Century. And all there right. was all these clips that were on YouTube with a guy just talking about any random thinking thing and saying something like, blah, 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 blah. Well, the world is flat. And then he would continue his, his and, and people were right. saying that he was coming out and admitting the earth is flat but no it it's somewhat like this filmmaker just using that as a sort of talking point and this filmmaker it's the same and if you're yeah. looking at youtube videos the past couple of days it's probably still available to see in fact i'll try to find it and put it in the description box the um this flat earth um uh play uh there was a video on youtube that came out about it so yeah, the uh, uh, the director, uh, director or the creator is Linda Florentino. Is that, I think I wonder it, how she on. heard about Flat Earth. She oh, probably didn't knows. see anything from the real Flat Earthers, or she wouldn't have used that as a euphemism for craziness. She would have become a Flat Earther because it's point, undeniable. You're right. She wouldn't have, unless she's a closet Flat Earther. Um, sorry, Linda. Fl I'm sorry, Lindsay. Wow, I was thinking of an actress, Lindsay Ferentino. Not Linda Florentino, Lindsay Ferentino, F E R R E N T I N O. The Flat Earth begins at blah, blah, blah. It's on playbill.com, the official Broadway website. And it just opened. So we'll see. Two 13 year olds attempt to try to make some sense of the events, their lives, and the future. There you go. Sounds compelling. I, mean, really. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Whatever. It's, it's, yeah. it's, again, it helps the metrics. Why not? Yeah, it's just something else with Flat Earth in the title that's and interesting. Again, I guarantee that that title wouldn't have even existed hadn't we been along because we yes. we put it in the media so much that now people are just throwing the term out there whenever they can right like the author and you know yes yeah, there's probably more to come we do not know i mean there may be going so far as you know how lipstick shades well you wouldn't know or you might know uh, lipstick shades have crazy names like persuasion pink or something oh, God, there yeah. could be a lipstick name flat earth no i'm not joking and one of those don't edgier brands don't get me started on a beer shades. i mean there is a beer Seriously. company called uh flat Earth beer, I think, or something like that. Flat Earth, yeah, Brew. flat. Well, Flat Earth Brewing Company, sure. Yes, so it, it, you don't know. Again, we're we're everywhere. It's the, it's that line from James Bond. I swear to God, it's the thing you got to know about Flat Earth is we have people everywhere. <laughs> the uh, and then the guy right next to him is like, don't you you know, don't you think you know? And then the guy draws draws a gun. So uh, speaking of which, we have another NBA player who has upped the ante. So you used to think that Kyrie Irving, who is a full-blown flat earther, you know, now playing for the Boston Celtics, you'd think that he was the the top of the of the conspiracy crowd right now in in athletics. Oh no, my friends, he is not. As of yesterday, there is a new guy out there, and you can you can tell where this is going. Uh, his name is Jordan Clarkson. He is currently LeBron James' teammate. He's averaging almost twenty points a game. And he's six foot five. So when he talks about giants, he's talking about people way bigger than him. Right. And he has gone down the road of, and let's frame it here. The we all remember if you're if you're a good flat earther, you know, not not just an armchair flat earther, you're a good flat earther, you remember no forests on flat earth. That story that got a whole bunch of traction last year, was it last year? 
that uh, early last year, I think. Doesn't it seem like three years ago? I know. It seems like so long ago. <laughs> Flat Earth. Oh, of, back in 2015. Flat Earth time. It's yeah, it's Flat Earth time. Where uh, no forest on Flat Earth that talked about mesas and mountains being remnants of giant trees. And that we that everything was just bigger, kind of like what we used to do. Televisions used to be really, really big, and electronics used to be really, really big, and then we shrunk them down. And that the old versions of this world used really, really big building blocks. You know, the sandbox was just much, much simpler. And so he comes out and says, he just doesn't say no forests on flat earth. No, no, no. He takes it a step further and says that, and I quote, dinosaurs were kept as pets by gigantic people. That's and I, you know what? Pretty trippy. I, yeah, I I'm not saying it's not true. Oh, I don't hate it. A random person read that, it would be compelling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you have to you have to unravel that whole thing. Right. It is like, okay, where where is this coming from? And then so you have to work backwards from gigantic people, from their gigantic pets to the gigantic gigantic forests and sounds like uh the Flintstones to me. And he mentions the Flintstones. Oh, really? Yes, he does. Uh, let me see here. Clarkston didn't say if he had been bin binge watching. The, this is, I'm sorry. This article is from Washington Post. Uh, it's uh, in the description box. Just put it there. Everybody's picked up on this. Uh, Clarkston didn't say if he had been binge watching the Flintstones, uh, but he did seem quite serious about making his comments on road tripping. Same same podcast that, that uh, Kyrie came out on. Same guy. Uh uh, a podcast usually hosted by former former Cleveland players Richard Jefferson. Je Richard Jefferson's not with the Cavs anymore, and Channing Fry now with the <laughs> Nuggets and the Lakers. Road tripping should be real name renamed. They're tripping. <laughs> the podcast released Monday featured a pair of former Lakers, Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr., which is amazing. I actually I remember Larry Nance Sr. Uh, that was my era, who were traded to the Cavs last month. The subject of not believing in dinosaurs came up, and Clarkson said, I don't believe in dinosaurs either. Well, no, actually, I do. And then he went on his jag and says, this is going to get a little bit crazy, and then he was going to take you all a little left on this. And they say, y'all know how we got dogs and stuff, right? So I think there were bigger people on the world before us and like the dinosaurs was their pets. And you know, that's all you need. And you, I mean, he, he goes on, but I won't read any more than that. You guys can read the article yourself. But the point is, is the press, you, you have to understand if you know anything about uh, just ger general journalism, the press are just hate talking to athletes because they're so dry and they don't have anything really interesting to say because they're just trained over the years. You know, they're trained to say, just talk about the game. It was Off a it. rebuilding year. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, our opponents you know, were very well matched. I know we're down one, three in the series, but <laughs> I think we can come back. You know, we got good coaching we got a chance, you know, we playoffs. We absolutely can make the playoffs. So when a, a player comes out, and goes and forget about you know it's not like he's talking about trump or talking about global warming or anything like that he's going as far out as you could possibly go and still be in the nba basically and and so it's great and and so there's already people you know they're tweeting about it and it's it's fantastic more fun on flat earth really yeah in fact even josh hart jumped on it today uh the uh uh comedian he goes so this is what you say when you don't have me sitting next to you anymore <laughs> love it it seems like joe average or jane doe or whatever out there who doesn't know anything about flat earth is getting a heaping dose of it through all forms of media it's being kind of like slipped into their coffee you know it's they're Absolutely. getting drip fed flat earth information. We've got a play, we've got sports players coming out. Um, it's, it's amazing. We don't know exactly what's going to happen next. Who would have thought there would be a, a play that came out with right. flat earth in the title? I mean, right. And since the, uh, that YouTube guy came out, the former YouTube employee, there was a secondary story because people started paying more attention to YouTube and conspiracies because of that. And as some of you know, I, 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 you and I don't have children, but YouTube Kids, the YouTube Kids app, started catching flack because they're actually recommending conspiracy videos. And they're saying, well, why are you guys recommending conspiracy videos? And YouTube has to kind of dance lightly around this because they can't just say, what are you kidding? Conspiracy videos make us a lot of money. 
you know, there's a lot of people watching conspiracy videos. But also, why is it wrong for children to be exposed to conspiracy videos as long yeah. as it's not violence or, uh, you know, language or any, you know, the usual things that you wouldn't want children to be exposed to? It's against, you know, it goes against the uh, the current state of the union. Well, yeah, of course. But in reality, why would you not, if you were a parent, want your children, your child or children to be exposed to all sorts of um, ideas about how the world works and then let them make up their own mind, perhaps with your help. Right, right. I mean, this what is truth? Is it only what the school books say? If that's the kind of world we live in, I mean, I know. it's over. I know. The um, Let me read a well, quick little, just part of the opening paragraph. As reported at, um, uh, by business insiders James Cook, James Cook, the app is meant to filter out adult content. However, an investigation discovered that YouTube Kids was recommending videos claiming that the world is flat. Yay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course it is. Why wouldn't it? Because it's not again, adult content. I mean, you know, it's... But it, again, it comes down to the algorithms. And that is the one thing that's so different about Flat Earth compared to any of the conspiracy is you are almost mandatory driven to binge watch. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, other things like, oh, watch two or three videos about JFK or whatever. But with Flat Earth, you absolutely get sucked in and you do not know what to do. It's like, you know, just one more, just one more, just one. It's like, no, I'm not going to work today. One and more. And then you wake <laughs> up the next morning and the first thing you do, you search to see if there's new ones that came out. Exactly. And, and I, back in 2015, sometimes there weren't. But now it's, you know, we're spoiled, actually. We've got uh, yeah. new ones Dude, every I'm, minute of every day. I'm so jealous of people that are getting to it now just because No, of that. but not really, because I think it was easier in 2015 because uh, you got to actually view them all if you wanted to. Oh, now there's yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah. You never could. Sorry, I'm jealous of the re initial reaction where the, all of a sudden it's like, wait, how many? How many how many videos are out there? It's like you realize you you don't have enough time in your life to go through them at this point. It's like this is a fantasy of mine, by the way. It's like in your house or apartment or wherever, you suddenly find a door and you open it and it's a whole new room. It's a whole new yeah. it's a whole new undiscovered area yeah. um that people don't know about no. you you get you know you, it, people say oh it's that weird little corner of the internet <laughs> it's not a corner no anymore. it's huge <laughs> it's monstrous matter of fact we broke just two days ago when you type in flat earth and you sort by uh upload date we just broke 19.9 you know we're 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 up there we're way 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 up there and you again you compare that you know, I type in donald trump right now Donald. What about cat videos? I bet cat videos still be. Yeah, there. it's different though. That's it's fluffy. Yeah, Donald comes in at twenty one point nine, twenty two. We uh, and that's that's the president of the United States, not just the, any president, the most talked about president in the history of presidents. And we're we're right up there with him right now. And we're doing this without any marketing. We don't even need a press secretary. We just have we're just doing this by existing. Right. Which is fantastic. I just love it. And we're not organized. We don't have a leader. Um, it's just it's just happening. It's amazing. Yep. yep. I mean, it's not exactly Occupy Wall Street, but at the same time, we're oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me talk about if you don't mind. Uh, I gotta mention Joe Rogan real quick. Oh, yeah, we were going to discuss that for sure. So the, just a couple hours ago, two hours ago, as a matter of fact, two and change, he came out because Joe Joe Rogan has a massive internet presence. He's he has really worked social media well for uh c-list actor now i'm not exactly sure uh and he came up with another one it's a little five minute video it's called joe rogan explains eddie bravo's flat earth beliefs and it had it's now number one or number two depending on when you search for it because and that's why i finally figured out what verified does you know that little check mark next to your name that yes what that does is it gives you the benefit of the doubt it's like okay for your first 48 hours 72 hours whatever their algorithm is we're going to put you at the top of your genre and we'll let you get some hits and then if you keep it up then we'll leave you up there but other but then we'll start ratcheting you down so he you know he may fall you know in the next couple of days but for the next couple of days we gotta see his freaking face again and you know he's saying the same thing he's in in fact he even during this little clip he said oh yeah there's quite a few conspiracies that that have merit but flat earth isn't one of them which I what? thought was interesting because this is still the guy that i thought didn't believe in any conspiracies so he says flat earth 
Yeah, there's quite a few conspiracies that have merit, but flat earth has no merit. Nope. So no, how does he, well, we all know how he feels about the moon landing. Does he feel that that has no merit as well? I don't Would know. Would it go in that category? No, what conspiracies does Joe Rogan think? I, 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 that's one of the things I wanted to ask him because I, I, one, of my, if I ever had the chance, not that he ever allowed me I to. I know. He, it's something like, when you put two socks in a dryer, one disappears. Where do they go? It's something like that. That's the conspiracy Joe Rogan's into. Nice. That's like a Seinfeld routine, by the way. Just, <laughs> just something there. really stupid. Anyway, so if you guys want to check it out, you can. The He does this every once in a while. I mean, that particular one, JRE Clips, I think has 300,000 subs, which is, it's all right. I mean, it's no PewDiePie, but he's well, he's, already, he's already dropped off the top 10 almost immediately because he's a, a totally a paper tiger. He, he capped out at about 4.8, 4.9, and that was it. He was gone because they aren't real. PewDiePie, if you guys don't haven't heard already, is the number one YouTube channel in the history of YouTube. And it looks like he's been buying subs pretty much since year one. Really? Now, yeah. how can you prove that? Uh, how many different ways do you want? We don't even have the time to go through it all. Give uh, us a couple examples. The, the, okay. The, one, of the, one of the big examples is when you go out there, because these sites that you, know, you can buy, it, for people that don't know, social media has changed the game in that there are services out there which you can buy thumbs up thumbs down like you would want to buy thumbs down or you could do it for other people if you wanted to uh you can buy subs you can buy views you can even buy automated comments and you can always tell the automated comments because they're in broken english because they use an algorithm it's not like there's human beings doing any of this it's all are algorithms. these russian bots i heard heard people talk about that some, some might be some might be chinese i'm not sure but in pewdiepie's case there are some of these services actually reference him by name and say that oh yeah look what you know look what we you can we can do for your service we can bump you up does that prove that he's guilty no absolutely not but i treat it like this and you and i've talked about him before eventually you have to deliver content so you know in in a big city if you want to you want to hype up your restaurant you make a new restaurant you can hire a fake crowd outside put velvet ropes up and generate this buzz it's like hey there's people you know by the time you get to like the third or fourth level of people back there's real people going oh we got, i heard it's really good even though nobody's actually eaten there eventually you got to serve a meal sooner or later you got to do it and he never did he never delivered anything. I've watched, look, I have watched a whole bunch of his videos. He delivers nothing. He is literally known for one stupid video where he's just laughing at a Minecraft character getting stuck in a tree. That's literally where he got his, his start. Well, and some people do like PewDiePie and have even messaged me and said, well, I get why people like him. He's entertaining. And no, <laughs> no, uh, you no, and I don't not. think so, but maybe it's an age the, thing. The statistics. No, I don't care if it's, he has children as, as subs or not. There are certain things that would happen statistically if you had, okay, let me, let me put it in perspective. He has 61 million subscribers, right? The next closest person to him is Justin Bieber at half that number. He has more subs than Taylor Swift and Kater, Katy Perry combined, right? If that was legitimate, he would be on talk shows all the time. If he ever uttered his mouth and gave an opinion on anything, he would be treated like Warren Buffett. Well, he didn't he basically invent the whole gaming video thing on YouTube, playing a game and then talking? No. No, yeah. not really. I mean, yeah, he was one of the guys to do it. Wasn't he one of the first or one of the... He was one of the early guys, sure. Right. But it wasn't... But everybody did it better than him. It's not... Yeah, he, he was one of the first. Yeah. But it wasn't enough. He wasn't that good, right? First person shooters, there's a lot of really, really great guys out there. He's just... Oh, sorry. There's no... I, I know exactly what he did. They turned it, it, it... He turned it into a cyclical pattern, meaning YouTube pays you for your views, right? And you take those views and you take that money and you sink it back into the software and you buy more views, which gets you some of that money back. And you just keep ramping up and ramping up and they never knew when to quit. So they should have stopped at like 20 million, 30 million with everybody else. But no, I mean, do you understand? There's nobody between Justin Bieber and him. 
that's it. It's it's just well, if you like the kind of thing he does, he does those let's play videos and he does reading live comments and his own personal sense of humor. He has guests on with him. Um, and he's he awful. plays fan made games, which would endear him to true. He's all right. All right. Let me, let me, I'm throw not defending more. PewDiePie by the way at all, because I've tried watching and I thought, wow, you know, I guess I'm just too old and I hate saying that, but look at I his, felt. look at his channel, his about he's thing. Swedish. That his, that's yeah. Cool. And he's Swedish. Yes. He's not even American. For well, God. that doesn't mean anything. I always thought Sweden was. We cool always place. we may not create the the highest caliber of entertainment. They have Swedish meatballs and but, vegan Swedish meatballs at IKEA. So you're killing me. You're really <laughs> killing me. The uh, he recommends no channels. His his about thing says we I make videos. That's it. He his mission statement isn't there. His channel is literally there's nothing there. And in his description box of every video, it just literally his first lines is buy my chair. Three hundred ninety nine. Yeah, he's got this custom chair that you sit into. He can't games. sell. He what can't does, sell any of them. What does PewDiePie make? In terms of money. Yeah, from his channel. I'm going to check right now on Social Blade. Just out of curiosity. Well, it doesn't matter because the money he's making, a lot of it is not going to him. I've always heard the rumors. Not to not to drag this thing out. Does he have an agency that represents him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always heard oh. that he had a marketing team that was behind him, and they figured out the the formula. Yeah, but okay. Was, people say all sorts of crazy stuff about me and you, and people some small amount and believe it. So we can't really believe certain stuff about PewDiePie that we can't prove. But we actually do something. We actually create content. That well, people believe his stuff is content. It isn't. There's nothing there. It's hollow. And it does not. And even if you could say that it was actually there, it's not 60 million people worth of content. It's not. There's no breakout videos. Nobody's buying his merch. You know, it, 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 no, you're telling me he can't sell 100 chairs? I'm looking at um, Social Blade. I'm going to put his name in. Yeah. He's an A channel, A rated channel, which Shocking. is yeah. this channel. Yeah. Um, estimated, do you want monthly or yearly earnings? Which is better? Uh, he makes, uh, I think, 100 grand a month, I think. Um, 661.9K through 10.6 million yearly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. It's yeah, and if you sort and and I and if you and that's sort an on, estimate. I mean, yeah, I know, and it, it depends on, but again, he, his marketing company gets a lot of it. And then I'm going to look now at his subscribers. That you know, you, it yeah, shows you a sort month by order. subs. You'll see it. Oh wow, he gets a lot of subscribers, like eighteen thousand, twenty thousand, seventeen thousand per day. And yet, I saw a thing the other day where he lost nine hundred thousand over a course of a month. So. Yeah, I don't see Has that he found here. a way to like build it, you know, what's the average? Daily like? average is 19,655 subs per day. For yeah, whatever. whatever. There's no flat earth channel that's like that at all. Anyway, let's, let's move on. I'm sorry. I just, it's just. We're just like looking deep <coughs> into PewDiePie. I, no, I, I understand. I understand the exploit, but I, I. I think it's great. He's got a successful channel and more power to him, but I think. Yeah, but if the numbers aren't legit. If they're not even close to me, look, okay, let me compare it. Sorry, this will be my last thing, I promise on him. You can't compare him, it, it, whether you love Justin Bieber or you hate him or Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, these people have put out a ton of content, major label hits, right, on a regular basis for years, and he's crushing them. So... Why isn't he a major media figure? Meaning, why isn't this he? This is true. Being, I see what you're saying. He should like be Taylor on talk Swift, show circuits all the, the time. Singer, he's, she's on talk shows. She does fashion modeling. She's probably got a makeup line or something. Sells stuff. Makes right. personal appearances. Obviously, sings. Creates he, revenue through writing songs. Uh, making videos um he, i don't know she might even have a book or something I've oh yeah there's there's no limit i mean there's people that would lie cheat and steal to be those people's agents and those just the three that i can i can think of at the top of the heap whereas he he did try to do one reality show i think it was punk pewdiepie or something like that to where you know, it was like a like a prank show where people were doing pranks on him and pretty sure died in the first season so boring that it couldn't make it exactly he's not I look. I, I'm not. I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I know comedic timing, and he doesn't have it. <laughs> I don't care if he's European or not. Well, he maybe does not have it. A quite much younger generation who's watching it doesn't understand comedic timing. Maybe I'm a, kid, I'm a kid at heart. Lost. 
it, it, maybe that's true. It, it, I mean, well, hell, Zulu's kid says that uh, he he was a pa- fan of PewDiePie. See, there you go. It's popular, very popular. Um, you know, uh, I don't. What's popular in mainstream? I always have looked at and said, "What?" So, oh, well, I know, and and part of that's because we, uh, you know, we've tapped out. We've run out of things to. Yeah, our society, do, which, that's a theory which, of yours. Let's our spin, society let's, is in oh, the regurgitation mode of old things. We we have run out of novelty. We have run out, and which is why let's segue back into flat Earth here. Let's circle back around. And flat that Earth is, is that what the show's about? The, absolutely, it is, and <laughs> that's why flat Earth will win the day out, win the year, and will be the end of all media because it hasn't been touched. It is still to this day, virgin territory in terms of media, lack of a better word, exploitation. Nobody's done a show on it, reality show. Nobody's done a documentary on it until next month. Uh, nobody's turned it. You know how it goes. I mean, how many, how many real, after the first Real Housewives show came out, how many are there now? Can you even name them all? No. How many different freaking cities there are? I remember being at someone's house and they had Real Housewives on and I didn't understand the concept. I was just watching it and I thought, these look like real people, not actresses. Right. And they're fighting and it didn't. I didn't get what reality TV was. And then uh, the friend I was, whose house I was at said, well, she said, it's kind of like a real world, but yeah. with the older women. And yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, this world is And remember when nuts. real world started, that was back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And that was an MTV creation, which wasn't exactly, it was the beginning of reality television as we know it, but then we realized later it wasn't real at all. You right. Know, and I know that because I lived in New Orleans and I think they came, I left, I've moved there and back and there and back a couple of times uh, in the nineties and um, into early two thousand. But um, the real world house, people in the New Orleans area knew where the house was and would always talk about, oh, you know, they came into the, this coffee shop the other day and it, that everything was staged. It's basically right. what what your average bystander would say about what they saw about the filming of the real world, that it, right. none of it was real. No, no. And then they figured out how to do it even easier and cheaper. And that was pick the most uh, opposite people that you could ever pick, you know, mm-hmm. people that were not going to go along and introduce alcohol unlimited. And that was it. That was all he had to do. Well, like the whole Big Brother thing, the Big Brother house, the UK sensation. Oh, uh, right. I've never watched it. I've seen some videos right. about it or little, little excerpts, but that had a, a, a controlling disembodied voice and uh, that was had the people in to have chats. And then there was that other survivor. I never got into survivor either. Yep. I just sort of fell off the edge of the earth at some point when it came to mainstream programming and just literally said way before flat earth, I don't like any of what's going on anymore. I just don't want anything to do with it. And then I would right. find myself being the only one at a party or something who had no opinion on any of the new movies or TV shows or the new albums. And it, it makes you feel kind of old, but in some way, it's not about age anymore. It's about your discernment. So you end up feeling kind of proud you're not involved in that garbage. Uh, again, yeah. If you're a certain age, you've seen it. You, you, well, you've seen it no. better the first time the movie came out, you know, let alone yeah, the fourth it's remake. Like, how many times has this been remade? I mean, <laughs> how many times? Well, before Blockbuster closed, that gives you an idea of how long it's been. Back when you could go to Blockbuster and you, you just walk down the aisles, like, seen it, seen it, seen it. Blockbuster. Seen it. I totally remember those days. <laughs> oh, hell. I remember up here on the island uh, before Blockbuster when there was just little mom and pop oh, shops. Independent ones, yes. Little independent, like coffee shops. I mean, little tiny places with and they use the original cases before they even had the uh the the generic plastic cases which you took home you actually took home the real freaking vcr cases i have a very funny story i had this guy i was going out with very early in the relationship yeah. and he didn't have a uh a DVD, or not DVD, a VCR player. Right. And uh, he would go to a grocery store in California and rent one. And I told him the amount of times that you've gone to rent the DVD player, VCR player, you could have bought one. And he said, ah, well, whatever. So right. one day he asked me to come over. We were a very new couple, okay? So it yeah. hadn't gone that far yet. He said, I'm going to make you dinner and we'll watch a movie. And I thought, oh, he's going to try to put the moves on me. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Anyway, went over. And he had this 
rented a uh, VCR player. And when, you know, after he made a nice dinner, he's got the candles going, we're sitting in the darkened room and he's got his arm around me and he hits play and it's a porn. Oh no. He said, oh, oh my gosh, that, somebody must have left that in the player. Uh, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted to see. But the truth is, is he put that there on purpose to see if I'd be into it. Sure. What a move that is. It didn't yeah. work. I'm like, I got to go. <laughs> you really didn't do it. Well, I never. Well, I never. No, it just it showed what me. What kind of girl guys, do you take me for? This was creepy. It's just creepy. <laughs> you can't. It, it came. The, the, the player came from a grocery store. And when you'd bring it back, they would make sure there was nothing in it and make sure the thing was clean and put it back for someone else to rent. The grocery wow. store itself didn't rent porn. So the whole, his whole story was a lie. Wow. So yeah. Wow. People wonder why is she single? Well, <laughs> got well, a lot of you, crazy stories. <laughs> you do have a few. Yeah, that's good. I like yep. that. Uh all right. So where were we before we went? I have off no idea. Stories? We were talking about uh people <laughs> no that, that cheat on on views. I will never buy views, I will never buy subs. No, me either. You know, and here's I, one of the reason why I have integrity, number one. But number two, I want to know what I can do. I want to look at my exactly. sub count and view count and, and say, you did that. Well, I mean, Absolutely, myself yeah, and don't. people I interact with. It makes uh, yeah, you feel good about your achievements that way. There's no point in cheating. And I know there's people that do it because in YouTube, the, one of the biggest, it's a slippery slope because most people do it because they say, well, if I don't have enough subs or if I don't have enough views, people aren't going to click on it anyway. So not true. Every I, I know. single person started with zero subs. It comes down to merit, which is if it's a good enough video, it'll get shared and they want to fudge that and say, well, I want people to click on it because I, th I want them to think there's already been a whole bunch of people that have already clicked on it. It's that critical mass thing. But I okay, don't look at videos like that. I subscribe to a ton of channels that only have like 50 subs or one sub sometimes. But there's a drawback to that. And the drawback is, especially now with YouTube, is you guys don't know this yet. And in fact, I haven't even told you this yet. If you get caught... If the if whatever video it is gets caught with views or subs, YouTube will freeze the count and will not let it go up until they have investigated it. Is that so, true? Because I've heard YouTubers complaining. You know, you always see videos with people complaining about they're messing with my views, they're frozen right. my sub count. Is it because of bot views or some other reason? Uh, well, I think it's also some. Yeah, other there's things. also just there's lots of errors. But, but they on. will. They're really been working on the bot views now. And in fact, you can see this in Social Blade. You can look on uh, total. Remember that list I sent you about people that have gone into the negatives. And it's mm -hmm. mostly new accounts, mostly from overseas. And they buy a whole bunch of views right off the bat. And then YouTube says, well, you can't get more obvious than that. Doc. And they they whack it and it takes it all the way down. Uh, there was a makeup tutorial I think I showed you a Korean girl that does makeup tutorials and apparently she buys it on a regular basis. And I watched them pull down a million million hits. I've seen certain people's social blade that I've looked up and I've seen it uh, look like like about two thousand subs or something was just gone. Yeah. in one day and they didn't do anything crazy to make that occur i right. think they bought subs from one of those unreliable companies that just take them away later yeah there's a lot of companies out there and look it's at your own risk i just say you know that what ace mcleod said there's no law against it buy as many no. as you want and i know he's not saying everyone go buy subs but in a way you know what it is service that is provided and if you want to buy subs feel free go ahead i'm not going to call you out about it you know the the thing behind it there's a there's even a term for it it's called social relevance and mm -hmm. that is if you can manufacture social relevance then all of a sudden you have become famous for being famous it, it, which is why i call pewdiepie the paris hilton of the internet <laughs> that's funny because yes he, he he became famous just for being famous like oh because you don't want to be the person on the outside. It's like, that guy's got 10 million subs. I'm going to sub to him because I don't want to be left out. These people obviously know what they're doing. That's the crazy way to look at things. That's the old, what your mother said, if everybody jumped you off the, the bridge, you, you jump too. It's like, well, if it, <laughs> yes, if I was in the middle, they will. <laughs> no, it's not that you would jump off the bridge, but there were, if there were 10,000 people running around you towards a, uh, a destination in front of you, uh, you probably are going to mm, be, you know, it's, Oh, wow. It's like that uh, experiment when you go outside and look up at the sky, you know, in a, in a crowded area, and then everyone starts looking up. Same thing. Hey. You know?
people can be lemming like for yeah, sure. I agree. Um, I agree. Good comment from Flat Trotter S says in our live chat, which I've been sorely neglecting. I'll be there in a second. Uh, Flat Trotter S says there's some channels with 2K subs, and when they go live, they have six people viewing. Yeah, that's probably a sign of purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I, I get it. I totally get. It. Um, on a little side note, the if you remember, a side Neil, note I, to the side note to the side, side note, note to the side that note. We're off, <laughs> no, I'll bring. I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it All back right. on the road. Good. I'm glad as, you're as doing that as opposed to off road. The you remember the Neil deGrasse Tyson rant that he went on that little show uh, just recently. It was talking about the Earth being round and, and the flat earthers. They, they're addressing it every time. They, every chance they get, that's one of the default questions for Neil now. And what's interesting is there was a backlash to that where his arguments really weren't that great that the, the 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 people in mainstream media wanted more and so like washington post why neil degrasse tyson failed to prove earth isn't flat that just came out uh last week or a week before and there's more stories like that and there's because they're saying look he's not remember how i said he wasn't bringing his a game to the table when he went on comedy central as like look you didn't use any graphics you didn't use any uh animations or anything like that you just started just talking crap you know, using using things the average person on the street wouldn't understand, and that's people are starting to notice. I thought good. That was yeah, I wish more people would notice that he always uses the word round instead of sphere to trick right. people. Right, right. It's the new thing now. The whole yeah. round thing. Did you catch? Oh, by the way, uh, when I was doing my uh, my subject matter guy. Uh, oh yes, last night. Yeah. Last night, uh, I had the Navy cryptological technician. What does his, even that mean? Uh, I listened to the oh, show. Right, but... You're old. You're old enough. I know. You're only like 39. <laughs> but you remember the old term electronic warfare? Um. Well, maybe, but clear me up on that. Did you no. Not play war when you were growing up, or was it just no. wearing? Books on your head. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Walk with so, books on your head. Yeah, that was a big thing. Yeah. Books on your head, folks. That's a thing. The uh, <laughs> it's called etiquette. Exactly. Walking through a room without seeming that you're actually walking. You're just floating. You float, right? You float. <laughs> Don't walk. <laughs> the, the, the fact that I know that's kind of scary. Yeah, so uh, electronic warfare was a thing back back in the day, and it is now advanced to the point where they've retitled it, and it's now called cryptologic or cryptological technician. And the short version of that is they are the guys that sit in front of the scopes, the, the heavy radar scopes, and they will evaluate a threat that's in the distance. So if it's a fishing boat or a water skier or a plane or the Loch Ness Monster, whatever it is, they will be able to tell you. Um, that, that's straight out of Star Trek where, you know, Picard would say, you know, that ship, you know, what you know, what do you know about it? And then say, well, it's a class three, blah, 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 with such and such phasers. And they they will absolutely analyze the hell out of that ship. They'll look it up, they'll send out drones, they'll take pictures, they'll uh th then they'll feed the pictures to everybody and say, Okay, that ship that's 30 miles out, it's this. This is our recommendations for it. Blow it out of the water or just ignore it because it's a whole bunch of Chinese fishermen. Whatever it is, it's it's whatever. It is. So that's what this guy did, and he was making some wonderful observations and saying that, oh yeah, their radars go way way further than the curve, and even in some instances, and I don't know if you heard that, uh, where they were tracking ships at 500 miles, which should not be possible with with standard radar. He goes, they even the Navy can't explain it. It's just sometimes it just happens that the, the atmospheric conditions are perfect and they can actually hit ships at 500 miles. And he goes even weirder. They could track airplanes out to a thousand miles. Should not be possible, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. And now I know what electronic warfare is. Yeah. Electronic uh, warfare. I had no idea. Everybody Tons. knows what electronic warfare is, but I, well, you know. I didn't, but uh, in our live chat, someone named cat herder, says electronic warfare is so 90s ish <laughs> I, shut up <laughs> it's not 90s ish okay. and uh i did have flat accord music saying i look very 80s ish today so yeah. that's a cool term electronic warfare i think it's better than cryptological because now everyone thinks cryptocurrency yes indeed uh, the um the other thing which was interesting at the end of the show was that i was reading an email from a guy because, you know, I, I, I put out kind of a new challenge. People said, well, what would it take for you to believe in the globe? 
you know, uh, what evidence? Strapped like, to a rocket and shot into space. What? No, no, not that. No, asking <laughs> me, not not recommending to me. It's like, you should go up on a rocket and then we'll leave you there. Oh, see what I did? I said, because he'd be a god away. Yeah. The Flat so, Earth Society has believers all around the globe. <laughs> oh, my God, if I hear that one more time. If I hear it one more time. They still use that for the conference. They still say people came from all around the globe to go to the conference in Raleigh. It's like, uh huh. It's <laughs> funny. Stay comedic timing. They didn't have it. <laughs> so they uh no, I was saying that okay, other than putting a 4K camera on the side of a rocket and making sure you just left it on, no edits, no cuts, and let that sucker go up to where the earth falls away, that's good. But I thought of something actually down on the ground. It was because of that vacuum thing. Yes. That following recently, and I said, Look, in fact, they can either do it with me, or they can they can do it by themselves, or I can do it by myself. Which is give me a freaking astronaut suit. You know, the ones that you're just casually just throwing on and going out into the vacuum of space and put me in a vacuum chamber and turn it on. Um, we don't want that happen to you because well, you no, die. no, they wouldn't no, they wouldn't do it because they it would kill me. That's just right. that they should well they like, might oh, do it. <laughs> Let's get rid of them. So Next I was, to Bay and then Math Bowerland. I was looking up astronaut stuff and he was trying to find astronauts in a vacuum chamber. Very, very tough to do. In fact, the only one that he found that was relevant was James May from the British television show Top Gear. They put him in a G suit. Uh, if you don't know what a G suit is, it's the when you're in the Air Force, it's that G force pressurized suit that they put you in. It's almost like an astronaut thing. But the thing is, it's part of the plane. So it's not a standalone suit. You sit in there and there's a whole bunch of tubes and wires and all this crap. And it's pressurized from the plane. And they put him in a vacuum chamber and they cranked that thing up only for a second or two. And they made sure he wasn't standing. He was sitting and the suit just went absolutely rigid because when you're in a, pl a flight suit, you don't have to get up. You're just sitting there, you know, you, you and your joystick. All you have to do is move your forearms. That's all they care about. And it's like, yeah, that's perfect. Now explain to me how that works with that giant chamber with all those things hooked up to them. Explain how you converted that to a little backpack that's on the back of an astronaut suit. What sort of powerful motor and battery system and compressor is being used to keep that thing from succumbing to the vacuum of space? It doesn't exist. It, we know it doesn't exist, but aren't there people who built that thing who think it, every single thing that goes into space, there are people who build these items and then think that they go to space. Un unless there is no subcontractor for the, the backpack and the astronaut suit. Show, mm -hmm. so, show me somebody, tell me what the, the exact specs of You always thing. hear stuff like, my grandfather built the blah, blah, blah that's on the ISS. I mean, you hear people say that. The, Not the my grandfather, but my father or something. The compression system that would be in that backpack, would what what's powering it? What battery, do you know how heavy the battery would be and how long would it even last to fight off the vacuum of space if you could even do it at all? And what didn't I'm the saying, battery backpack also keep them from freezing? Oh, yeah, and it's, an air conditioning, and it's an air conditioning system and it's part of the communication system. What miracle backpack is on the on the, the, the backs of those astronauts? They don't exist. And my point is that, and we all know this, we've all, we've all talked about this, is that an astronaut exposed to the vacuum of space would he would blow up like a balloon? The fabric would would become rigid immediately. He wouldn't be able to bend his arms. He'd just be he wouldn't be able to move at all. He wouldn't be able to move his legs. Oh, so it's a perfect thing to do to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think. A, well, I was willing to volunteer, of course, and say, "Look, just give me a freaking astronaut suit. Put me in a chamber. Tell me, and I will tell you exactly what sort of mobility I have." And I'll even let you know. And you can't put me in there and say, oh, it's a vacuum now. No, 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 no. I will have those. Th they had two of the three objects. It was great that I would put in there with me. One would be like a rubber glove or a balloon with a single breath of air, which was which blew up exactly like I, t I thought it would. One is just some standing tap water, which boiled immediately because in a vacuum chamber at room temperature, the, the, the water just uh, boils immediately without heat. You know, it just starts gassing away. And the third thing would be, well, I'm not going to tell you what the third thing is. Mm. It's it's a secret, but the point is, is you're going to keep that in your backpack. Uh, I am. I, back I, it's like because the other two <laughs> things you could fake if you wanted to. The third thing you absolutely can't fake, but it's it's sort of related to the other two. But I thought it was fascinating that uh, that they again one of those little things we missed. It's like why do astronauts train in swimming pools? Because they can't train in a vacuum chamber, and you've got to show them training somewhere. 
even though a swimming pool is absolutely counterproductive. It's like, oh uh, yeah, but that it's watertight. It's like, no, no, waterproof and vacuum proof are completely different things, which is why I included that train container, which you probably saw in now the beginning of every strange world I do, that 10, 15 second clip of the German steel train car, which was crushed like a, like a monster had grabbed it in two seconds from just a mild vacuum force compared to the vacuum of space. Sorry. Um, I want to, don't say sorry. I want to, you know how I was talking about that there's some channels that I subscribe to that have hardly any subscribers at all. Right. I want to give a shout out to a channel that I am going to encourage everyone to subscribe to because she's a really awesome person. I think what? that's reason enough. And in the description box of this video, you will uh, find a link to her channel. Her channel is Elspeth Awake. That's E L S. P E T H awake, Elspeth awake. But if you can't remember, just go in the description box. She only has 27 subscribers. And no, um, she made a wonderful video sort of for the Easter season for you and I, and it's called Flat Earth Peeps. And she used those marshmallow candy peeps. I don't know if they have those in the UK, but I don't know if they've got them in Canada, but they're definitely popular in America. Marshmallow chick shaped things and made a whole diorama like you would do in high school with a flat earth and other hot potatoes set, I guess you'd call it, with my jukebox in it, with my three cats, with your gray cat bitsy who we don't see too much anymore with the uh the flat earth and a dome over it and um it's just really charming she took a lot of time kind of like an old claymation uh sort of cartoon she took a lot of time to make this video and anyway so please subscribe to her channel and give the video a thumbs up it was just a really nice wonderful and warm thing for her to make for for mark and i and i just want to thank her and the only way I can actually offer her something is to just have you who are watching uh, subscribe to her channel and give her a thumbs up, which will make her happy. <laughs> so nice, yeah, it's a good. No, it's a good channel. I love the diorama thing with the peeps. I thought it was very clever. Love the the creative outlets that the flat Earth community takes. Yeah, we have people who are truly amazing and oh, yeah. giving. that's a very giving thing she didn't do it to get views or anything or that to get popular cool. she's I love it. nice and she even found little uh the exact same smith's albums i have behind me small and cut them out like dollhouse size in frames and put them behind the her attention to detail was amazing it was she even had what you call the peanut gallery uh, which you, you mentioned on right. uh, your Strange World show, and these sort of pastel-colored peanut candies in the background. Anyway, it's just pretty pretty yeah, cool. So that was neat. Love it. I like that. I used to love gingerbread houses when I was growing up, too, and this kind of reminded me of that. That would imply that you actually were allowed to eat sweets? Yes, of course. My mother would make gingerbread houses. She would actually bake the gingerbread flat and then build it into a house and use the gumdrops and the frosting and all of and that. And when you reached for it, she'd smack your hand with a ruler. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, we, you didn't want to eat it afterwards because it was just so handled. But it was beautiful and it was a lovely thing when we were very young to have. And now you can cheat and buy kits pre-made. It's not right. It's not right. You wouldn't catch Hansel and Gretel using one of those. No, definitely. They're, they, they'd be in the oven anyway. Um, let me, <laughs> isn't that what the witch put them in the oven? So I, creepy is that fairy tale? It is pretty creepy. I mean. And I'm sure you think about it every time you have Girl Scouts show up at your door. No, but now <laughs> I will. <laughs> anyway, I want to say hello to everyone in the chat. I want to say hi to Lucy Lemons. And um, she's asking, how do you get to highlight other people's names in the chat. And I believe when you write, you've got to put the at sign and then the name. Is that so how you do that? At Lucy Lemons. Now, I think. So I you're, you're, that's, a, that's an excellent question, Lucy. I was trying it out in the last Globebusters. And people I think do that I to me it. all the time, and I do not know how still how to do it. But um, I'm mostly lurking in chats. Well, Flat Accord Music says, I'm wearing a Morrissey t-shirt right now, and it says, stop watching the news. You know what? Morrissey, as Flat, Earth Accord, Flat Accord Music says, is so close. Morrissey is so close to truth. He's not a flat earther, but he's, God, he's got so much on the ball. A couple things he's doing wrong in the opinion of flat earthers, but he's, he's close. He's definitely an artist who's 
thinking along the right track for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy says she loves my earrings. Thank you. Um, bling bling the BS of the ISS says, yes, it's the at sign. So it's the at sign and then at bling bling the BS of the ISS. All right. So that's now I will start it. using that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Hori Sheet Show is here too. And he as well as saying, if you put the at symbol in the first two or three letters of their name, it pops up. Oh, good. It pops up. That's very, very helpful. Um, DITRH says, no, you just put their name. <laughs> Is he trolling me? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows with that guy? Um, let's see. We've got Bob of Globusters here and Timaeus who says most fairy tales were made to be scary. Yeah. I mean, what about, um, Jack jumped over the candlestick? I mean, a boy jumping over a candlestick to burn himself and then Jill falling down a hill or something. And there's... There, a spider and falling off a tuffet, whatever that is, danger. It's all about danger and death when you're young, when you have those fairy tales. They're, a lot, they're lot of people die in, in fairy tales. <laughs> they do. They do. Um, we've got Joey Sylvie as well. Did I already say D Marble? Maybe so. We've got Nathan Oakley, 1980, and Stephen Watson and Ireland Von Vicious. Congrats to D Marble, by the way, for doing the South Korea stuff. I saw the pictures. Excellent. Yeah. Wonderful going to a conference in South Korea and speaking in front of a bunch of people and, and having the food and enjoying the experience and being somewhat outnumbered because everyone yeah. is not and, speaking English. That's when you know that, that experience. So cool. That's when you know that flat earth is, has got legs. I mean, hell I'm media jealous of him. Yeah. But, you know, that's what it's like, wow, how'd you get that gig? You suck D marble. <laughs> It was great. I, I was really, I mean, I love so I loved, darn good looking. I'm, 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 I'm so <laughs> darn good looking. No, um, I was, I, I, you know, I push him all the time. It's like, get me off the camera, put D Marble on the camera. Exactly. Um, plus, he's nice, super intelligent, knows what he's talking about. I, I mean, go pretty far. much, he's the no, perfect storm. No, 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 no. He's just, just a good looking guy. <laughs> Quailu Charlie is here as well. Uh, I already mentioned Cat Herder, Rob Morrill as well. Rhonda Fairman is here. Glenn Parents, uh, Martin Leadkey, who says, I'm here, but I'm just laying down. You know, you've been doing so many videos, Martin, lately. You deserve to lay down a little bit. Uh, Diva Dante uh, is here. And Racer FE for Life, who says, Thank you, Mark, for subject expert interviews. And uh, everyone in chat is still going back and forth with the at symbol. And I've, I've right got one next week, by the way. Uh, Test right yourself. What have you got next week? Uh, next week, I have a telecommunications specialist that has spent a good chunk of his career working with satellites, which mm. he says are not what you think, and fiber optics. He, he's dealt Very with just about every major telecommunications company. And he, he goes, yeah, he goes, it's all a piece of crap. Because they're, they're, they're not, nothing's true. How to true. use those words. However, it will be on Truth Frequency Radio, TFR, and yeah. that's going to be uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, on seven, seven Pacific, eight Mountain, nine Central. And uh, yeah, Truth Frequency Radio. And we're going to, I think we're going to do him Tuesday. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I want to say hello to Laurel Austin and D-Wave is Surfer. Um, I've missed so many people because obviously the show has been going for a while. Uh, Paul Giacomo, China Mrs. Jones says, Mark, you could just ask Tesla to send you up there in a car. That seems to be the safest way to travel considering the shuttles blow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His bulletproof car. Yeah. His space proof car. Yeah. Don't know. Don't get me started on Tesla today. I'm, I'm too tired to go on that rant. Um, hi to Craig, Brian and Ute. I think I might have mentioned Toto Call. Don't know. Snowfire is here. Snowfire says, I wonder what other famous person is going to pass this year. So far, Billy Graham, Steve Hawking. Who else? Didn't oh, Tom right. Petty die this year too? Or was yeah, that last year? I think it was last year. Last I don't know. We'll see. Uh, hi to Stephen Chess as well. I'm more interested to see what new celebrity. We still haven't really gotten any actors to come forward in Flat Earth. Hmm. Well, I'm, we've got uh, all of the people that involve themselves with NASA. They're actors. Well, you know <laughs> what I mean. I mean, what I'm saying is the the documentary actually may help that because then it's like, okay, now you know now they can chime in. You watch, you wait. If that documentary gets distributed, you'll see some tweets from the film community saying, "Hey, I thought it was really interesting." Hey, and that way that they're off the hook a little bit. If they, they say it was interesting and fun, job done. Job it is, done. Yeah. Is if they, in fact, if they can say interesting and 
without saying that we should be neutered, <laughs> then I think we're interesting. We're, but I think they all should drink bleach. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. So I, I think I'm I'm I've got high hopes. Um, what else do we have? Um, I saw all people, free people here. Hello, hello. Um, what else? Shiny, happy people. <laughs> I know. Uh, Anders Ace, Irk Childs. Um, oh, I want to read. I want to read a funny email before we go. Um, I want to say hello. I'm just going to give a little sk ding, ding, knockout. I've never heard who that is before, but you've got a hello in the chat, even if That's you're trolling. That's a boxing reference, Patricia. <laughs> it is a what? It's a boxing reference. Oh, ding, I don't know. Ding, what... knockout. Hmm. You know, boxing um, bell. Ding, oh, yeah. Ding. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's, oh, this no. is Earth, Patricia. <laughs> I don't know about boxing. I'm uh, not into violence. I'm not into people everything. punching their perfectly good faces. Earth, America, sports. <laughs> it's like you can't just land and say, sports, oh, I got this. Food, I'm people, not going to read the manual. Violence. Uh, this is not the Earth I signed up for. Um. <laughs> I did want to say hi to Pino Pini, who says, I'm listening from North Africa. I like these subjects and I like learning the English language. Oh, so what we country in North Africa? Because North Africa is not a place. Yeah, Pino, tell us where you are. Egypt, uh, Libya, where is he? Hey, Spake Face, for, thank you for being here too. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I got everybody. Eh, I might not have, but. Um, Daniel Reza is correcting me and saying fighting is an art. You know what? That part I do get. I understand it, the martial arts and that kind of thing. But just when people are actually physically punching each other in the face, it, it doesn't it just doesn't do it for me. Your mileage may vary. Well, yeah. I mean, martial arts is more of a, a dance than anything. Boxing can also be sort of a dance form, mm. kind of. But yeah. then it kind of degrades into basically who can stay standing. <laughs> That's really it. I want to say hi to Four Eyes to See, who's been doing a ton of videos lately. And Carolyn Gutman Day is here too. And uh, Jose J.G. Gonzalez as well. And Joseph Smith. And um, let's see. There was something I wanted to mention that had something to do with an event that's coming up. Yes, it was from my Facebook. A guy whose name is Ven, V E N. Giancia, G-E-A-N-C-I-A, says, we are planning our first event for mid-November at Denver Open Media, 700 Kalamath Street. According to NASA, the definition of cosmology is the scientific study of the large-scale properties of the universe as a whole, and what we are going to do are enactments, comedies, comics, animations, music, and personal narratives. So this is called the Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival. Oh, so, right. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, you can look it up, Colorado International Flat Earth Film Festival, and uh, it's going to be mid-November. So I wanted to mention that for those who are interested in that. All right. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. What else? I know there's more. I know there's other things I was going to talk about. Um, I've got an interesting guest that I think is going to happen tomorrow. Only the reason I say I think it's going to happen, because it's unlike, uh, for example, if I contacted Joey Sylvie and said, hey, Joey, would you be my guest tomorrow? We'd plan it out. I'd mention, I'm just picking his name randomly because I see it. In the right. chat. People would know, oh, yeah, Joey Sylvie, I know who that is. Well, this is a person that doesn't have a YouTube channel. And he's interested in Flat Earth, but he's not technically a Flat Earther. His name is Daniel Wiley. And he's a guy who is interested in uh, the pharmaceutical industry. He's been involved in the pharmaceutical industry for years. And he has a very interesting story to tell. And we're going to talk about uh, pharmacology, uh, healthcare industry. And he says that at face value, these things might not be related to Flat Earth, but it is part and parcel of the same grand scale system oh, sure. programming. So that's what's going to happen tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. And he's got an interesting story about how he got involved uh, in what he's doing. He's 52 years old. Um, he was a former licensed pharmacist. And um, the cancer industry we're going to talk about and, and more. So very interesting show that I believe is going to happen tomorrow. I only say I believe in that I don't know him as well as I know other people right. who count on to be here. So right. that'll be cool. Cool. 
And I'm also, oh, Bob from Globusters just said, Patricia, talk about what you are going to be reading. Oh, you know what? I don't even know what the thing is that I'm going to be reading. But um, if you watched Globusters on, or listened to Globusters on Sunday, uh, Jaron had a portion about two and a half hours through where he was talking about, um, uh, I don't even know how to explain what he was talking about because I haven't read it yet. Um, it's a PDF that he offers for free. Maybe Bob can tell us, uh, Bob, could you put a little uh, link? It, it, I'll just say until Bob clears, clears me up. Um, Jaron found this really cool book that has quotes from all sorts of people. Now, the quotes have not yet been verified, but they're very interesting and they're very flat earth. And I'm going to be reading the PDF and I'm going to do that on Friday at 6 p.m. Oh. Eastern. So I've got, a, I've got a show on Thursday the 22nd, which is tomorrow, and Friday the 23rd at 6 p.m. And uh, the PDF is called A Plea for Flat Earth. You might have heard Jaron talk about it. Oh. So. I haven't right. read it yet. But I'm happy that Jerry's yes. back, by the way, that he's got some of his status back. He's he had you remember he had two strikes and he had one of them uh either expire or overturned, and so he's back up and running. Good. Yeah. I hate when people uh the the system of YouTube, the unfair system gets good people down. Oh, and Russian vids, uh, I interviewed him a while ago. It's on my channel. Uh, I've interviewed him three times now, it seems, but the most recent time, um, he didn't have a channel and now he's got a channel. So just look up Russian vids, you'll find his channel. And right. he's been on the Sun and Moon uh, group show a couple times doing uh, doing live hangouts, which is very unusual for Russian vids, but he's definitely mixing and mingling with all of us. Cool. Um, cool. Hey to Midnight Gardener, by the way, and the hard truth, and Jason Tomlinson. And Chris Monk Seeley says that I should do Flat Earth audiobooks online. I, you know, I have read... I did it in 1984 in full, and I've read portions of other books, but I had issues with my contact lenses, and they weren't the right prescription, and I'd always read some of it and not be able to follow through. Finally got it figured out. Um, I've got monovision, which means I have only one contact in and one eye only for reading. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, DITRH is putting the book, A Plea for Flat Earth, into the um, uh um, into the live chat. So if you're watching this live, you can grab it and read it for yourself. So, um, and Bob is saying there's a couple of glitches from the matrix happening during our show. It no always idea. seems to happen with us. I don't know. What's the reason? I know. Um, the, uh, the plea for flat earth book was written in the sixties or the PDF, whatever was, uh, was written in the sixties too. So okay. anyway, so we've been glitchy, but we've been hopefully entertaining and informative, which is what the secret show is all about. Have we missed anything? Yes, my troll letter. Oh my gosh, that's right. I got caught I up. I know, right? Some Please. Of you are. Come uh, on. Here we're going to, it's real short. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I caught this actually. Is it a troll letter where a guy's going to threaten to stab one of us? Like that uh, yeah, I wish. I wish I'd get more of those troll letters. But no, this was not a meth-induced uh, stabbing. No, he later wrote and apologized and said he was smoking glass. Well, no, no, no. Okay, so and then I had to look that up, and so did you. I had no so idea what it was. Recap. Yeah, he apologized the first time and said he was hitting the glass, right? And then, and then we talked on the you show. Thought he was says, going through the firmament or something. <laughs> well, that we all said. Well, he's obviously doing crack because you know you and I know so much. He wrote a death threat to Mark and I. It was basically the same death threat, yeah. and he used UK lingo, so we figured he was from the UK. We well, showed yeah, it on he, a show. He was using a twenty-four centimeter knife to stab us with. And it's like okay, that means he's European. And we're pretending to be European. Yeah, and and he said, and then we read that on air, and he apologized in an e in his first e email and said he was hi he was hitting the glass when he wrote that and we thought he meant crack because as you know you and I you know we're from the street represent right and we're we know not. all the cool oh, slang yeah we were folks. absolutely <laughs> oh my god me and me and puffy we're we're tight <laughs> puff the magic dragon <laughs> yeah exactly Sid and Marty Croft what <laughs> so <Mother's> then, <laughs> that and the bugaloos oh. um Sorry. So then he, we read that on air and he writes back again and he literally titled the email death threat apology number two with correction, which is, which is a brilliant name for an email title. And he or said, an no, album name. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, he goes, <laughs> and he goes, no, hitting the glass doesn't mean hitting crack. He goes, I was actually doing meth. I had been doing meth. I was on like a six day bender. 
So when you I, do math, you want to kill people? I didn't know that. I thought you meant I, I, I thought you I just want to clean your house with a toothbrush. Exactly. When I do meth, I'm usually pretty constructive. But <laughs> yeah. apparently when he does meth, he wants to stab YouTube. you and me. <laughs> yeah. So no, I mean, I don't I think there's confusion there. I honestly think that hitting the, the glass is actually crack but he seems to think it's meth i think maybe it could be interchangeable either the way things we learn on this show it's pretty darn amazing this is not that this is just a straight up insult you ready okay go ahead okay it's real quick and then we, you can wrap it up this one's got the, the title of it's called antarctic ice wall it's like okay well i'm gonna open that dude you need to get off the island more i'm over here in everett and i want you to know without hesitation that you are an idiot and moron you and your pack of flatty McFlat faced dumbasses <laughs> need to just shut up and I'm here to take you on. <laughs> Show me the thousands of miles long ice wall according to your map where ships sail in circles. He spelled sail like garage sale, just so you know. Don't give the lame ass excuse that it is protected by the governmental cabal. Bullshit, okay? You prove the ice wall and I'll bend over and kiss your asshole. Really? Bob Monroe, and he actually he actually split ass and hole into two words. You know, it's weird when you do get troll letters; they always have misspellings. They do, <laughs> they do. It, it, was, it wasn't just one. I mean, he was he went out of his way, but yeah, Flatty McFlatface, whatever. Nice. It is. Yeah, it was, yeah. So I appreciate that. It's not often I get creative troll letters, but I thought it was worth it. So. I like it. Um, a couple other people have joined toward the end. 118 EAL is here. Um, page 42 is here. And Still Earth Journey is here. Um, I've also got to say hi to Midnight Gardener, although I think I probably did. Sometimes I say hi twice because it's just too much and I can't handle it. Can't remember all the, all the names. Um, I think we've concluded this broadcast. Cool. That's it. There it's ain't all no cool. more. All cool in the gang. Yes. So have a lovely afternoon, evening, or where, uh, wherever it is, or where, whatever it is, wherever you are. And please give the video a thumbs up and um, subscribe to Mark's uh, channel, Mark K. Sargent, and subscribe to my channel, Patricia Steer. Well, that's me, but it's called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And I'm almost at 13,000 subs. <gasps> Excitement. Yeah, give so. me subs so I can catch up to Jaren <laughs> eventually. Man's got 95,000 subs. And he deserves a whole lot more. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. I don't mind. Whatever. It's, you know, everything's going to play out the way it's going to play out. You know what? It's nice to have subs and it doesn't really matter at the same time. Yeah. You know? What matters is the movement move, moves forward and the community no benefits. No man left behind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye all. Catch you later and keep it flat. Long live flat earth. Hail Hydra.